गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द लेक्चर नाइन सो इन प्रीवियस क्लास वी कुड कवर अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स ऑन सिग्नल ऑपरेशन ऑन इंडिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल दैट इज टाइम वेरिएबल वी कुड अंडरस्टैंड फोर डिफरेंट ऑपरेशन दैट आर परफॉर्म ऑन टाइम वेरिएबल ऑफ द सिग्नल द फर्स्ट बींग द सिग्नल द टाइम शिफ्टिंग time scaling and the ne next being reflection or folding and the last one is precedence rule to be applied whenever we have been given both time shifting as well as time scaling components and i had given you certain assignments too i'll be considering few more examples and before i consider the next examples i'll just touch upon the assignments that i had given to you you please cross check at your end so whether you have solved it correctly or not so i'll be sharing my screen welcome you again for lecture 9 so the topics covered in this lecture are as follows basic operations performed on signals preceding rule for time shifting and time scaling and the next topic that we are touching upon is the elementary signals so elementary signals is a new topic actually okay so let us try to complete the basic operations performed on the signal by today yeah this was the assignment so x of n is equal to n for all n value to be odd zero otherwise so in this case if you try to scale down to 2 by 2 so x of n would, would would look like this if this is a n so i just write like uh, uh, i'll i'll concentrate on positive side same will be on the negative sides 1 2 3 4 and 5 so at odd signal you have the same value of n odd signal you have 1 here you have 3 here you have 5 here it goes on now if i scale it down by 2 means i need to divide by 2 divide by 2 divide by 2 divide by 2 everywhere divide by 2 it continues divide by 2 so the fractional part should be omitted that is what we have learnt in the previous class because it's a discrete time signal fractional part should be omitted so 1 by 2 is a fractional part this goes off or it should be ignored this should be discarded because it is 3 by 2 5 by 2 should be discarded what should be retained 0 should be retained because 0 by 2 is 0 2 by 2 is 1 it should be retained 4 by 2 is 2 that should be retained so wherever you have zero values only that thing will be retaining hence your y of n signal would look like this one everywhere zero everywhere zero so you take any any uh, signal of n or any value of n your amplitude of the signal is zero hence it is a zero signal so after that i had uh, started with uh, the problems of uh, preceding rule pre pre precedence rule uh, we could solve three problems one is x of 3t we could solve it so what i need to do here this is original signal so when you i want to scale it by 3 so divide by 3 in the denominator so just take it in the denominator of the time axis divide by 3 divide by 3 that's it your signal is and um, the second example that we consider is 3t plus 2 so we have scaling as well as we have shifting so in this case we need to apply the precedence rule for b uh, problem we are applying the precedence rule so precedence rule says that first operation that in, that to be performed is shifting second operation to be performed is scaling so for shifting what we do is we have a intermediate signal called v of t so there what we do is whatever may be the scaling positive or negative scaling 3t or whatever it is replace it with just t so that makes the given signal as x of 3 x of t plus 2 so t plus 2 means shift left by two times so the original signal is here we are shifting it by two times onto the left similarly after scale after shifting we need to do the scaling for scaling so v of t is an intermediate signal i need to scale it 3t it's as good as the output itself or as good as the given signal itself so if i scale it by 3 the meaning is the intermediate signals time axis should be divided by 3 so divide by 3 here divide by 3 here divide by 3 minus 3 by 3 is minus 1 minus 2 by 3 as it is minus 1 by 3 as it is here so this is a compressed and shifted version of the given original signal 
and combining a and b we uh, i had given you one of the uh, problem to add it, add it some of these two signals so minus 1 by 3 till plus 1 by 3 x of 3t exists so that is what i have written minus 1 by 3 to plus of 1 by 3 only x of 3t exists, x of 3t plus 2 does not exist, hence I am writing retaining as it is. And in minus 1 to minus 1 by 3 range, only x of 3t plus 2 exists, where x of 3t does not exist, hence I am shifting, taking that signal and placing here. So this is x of 3t plus x of 3t plus 2. We have to perform. So C, D and E. So let me take C first. So I call it as y of t, y of t is x of minus 2t minus 1. I will tell it in a very simpler way, very simpler way, please concentrate and follow in the same manner. So here, what we are supposed to do is, first, according to the precedence rule, I need to first give the preference to shift. So in shifting, what we have to do, whatever might be the scaling, replace it with t minus 2 t should be replaced with t. So this is what we are doing. So when I do it, the signal, intermediate signal, I represent it as v of t. So signal looks like x of x of minus 2 t should be replaced with t minus 1. So this signal, if I draw it, this is x of t minus 1, which we have represented as v of t. This is a time axis. This is y axis 0. So, this is the original signal. So, what is the meaning of x of t minus 1? So, you need to right shift it by how many times? By 1 times. That's the meaning. t minus 1. So, right shifting means minus 1 comes to 0 and 0, whatever value is at 0, it should come to 1 and whatever value you have at 1 should come to 2. So, 0, 1 and 2. So, 0 is shifted at this position. So, if I draw it, sorry for my di diagram so hope you understand it's a diagrammatical representation that's it so this is how it looks this is how it looks okay so this is just a shifted version now what you have to do you have to go for the second one according to the precedence rule second one is a scaling scaling come reflection both both we are doing here so what you have to do here the signal intermediate signal for this you need to do the scaling scaling is minus 2t minus 2t so minus 2t means what should be done the signal is v of t is given here so minus 2t whatever has been in the place of a in the place of scaling factor just take it in the denominator of the time axis of the given signal so v of t is my given signal now intermediate signal so take this minus 2 onto the denominator of this time axis so if, if i'll just change the ink and then erase it because in your exam you should not write it this is just for your understanding so i will divide it by minus 2 i'll divide it by minus 2 i'll divide it by minus 2 so what you get here you'll get it as 0 this you will get it as minus 1 by 2. This you will get it as minus 1. Minus 1 by 2 and minus 1 are present on the other half of the time axis. That you need to write. You just mark these time these things into the time axis. This is time axis. Minus things exist. 0 is here. Minus 1 by 2 is here. Minus 1 is here. So whatever happening at minus 1 uh, here, same thing at minus 1. Reflection version minus 1 by 2 so minus 1 by 2 i'll just take the peak of the signal and a zero so as it is here this is one amplitude okay reflection comes scaling i am doing it in a single operation in order to avoid confusion just divide whatever a value you have scaling factor it just divide it divide it to the denominator but make sure that you don't draw it in this fashion Okay, minus excess does not exist on the right hand side. This is wrong. This is wrong. Okay, this is right. So make sure to take care when you have uh, the reflection, it should come onto the left hand side if it is a minus values of the time axis. Okay, so with this, we'll go to the next problem. Next problem being D. So here, x of 2t plus 2, there is a bracket like this let me call it as y of t so i'll open the bracket you will get it as x of 2t plus 4 
So I need to shift and scale it. So first I need to shift it. Shift means what, what we are supposed to do? 2t should be replaced with t. So intermediate value I'll be calling it as v of t. So v of t is v of t is x of t plus 4. t plus 4 means t plus 4 means shift plus is there left side by 4 times. That's the meaning. Shift left by 4 times. That's the meaning. This is the original signal. Shift it by left, left for by 4 times. Minus 1. If you shift it by 4 times, it will go to minus 5. Minus 1 shifted by 4 times to the left means minus 5. 0 shifted to left by 4 times means minus 4. 1 shifted by uh, left times, uh, left by 4 times means minus 3. So minus 2, minus 1, just I wrote it for continuity. So whatever that is happening at 0, that will happen at minus 4. Okay. So here I am having amplitude 1. So I draw it in this fashion. Okay, so this is the shifted version of the signal we call it as intermediate signal V of T. Now the second operation that we are supposed to perform is scaling. For scaling, what we are supposed to do? V of bring back that original uh, value, scaling factor. So 2T, which is nothing but X of 2T plus 4. So what we are supposed to do? Simple thing. Simple thing. I'll change the ink whenever I want to show it, show this, because you are not supposed to write in your examination this fan, this manner. 2 is a scaling factor. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, everywhere divide by 2. I'm having a finite value of the signal only here. Rest everywhere it is 0. So I'm concentrating only on this. Minus 5 by 2, minus 3 by 2, minus 4 by 2. So let me mark here, minus 0, minus 1 minus 2. So minus minus 4 by 2 means minus 2. Minus 5 by 2 exists somewhere here. Minus 3 by 2 exists in between these things. Because it is minus 4 by 2. Minus 4 by 2 is minus 2. So whatever here is the peak. Here is the peak. Amplitude 1. So increasing slope, decreasing slope. So this is your y of t. That's it. Okay, so we could solve the problem number D. This is problem number D. So now I'll utilize the space that is left over on the screen. So let me solve the problem E. X of, please cross check with the answer that you have already done. Uh, hoping that you have done it. This is X of 2T minus 4, 2 into 2. Uh, there is a negative side minus 4. So first operation that we are supposed to perform is shift operation wherein 2t should be replaced with t and we call that signal particular signal as v of t which is nothing but x of t minus 4. The meaning is shift right by 4 times. That's it. So this is v of t. This is t axis. Shift the original signal. This is the original signal by four times. Zero comes at zero comes at. Let me write it. So zero comes at four because it is shifted by four times to the right. Minus one comes at three and plus one comes at five. So if I draw the original curve as it is, this is how it looks. This is how it looks. Okay, so with this, uh, we are going for the next one that is uh, the scaling, scaling factor, scaling of the intermediate signal. This is an intermediate signal. So scaling should be done by 2t, 2t, so which is nothing but x or 2t minus 4. That is what has been asked. This is v of t, this is t, v of 2t it is, which is a final answer, 0. 1, 2, 3, I think it is sufficient. So what I am supposed to do? 2 is a scaling factor. So I am supposed to take it to the denominator of the previous signal. Okay. So 3 by 2, 3 by 2 exists here. 4 by 2 is 2, exists here. 5 by 2, exists here. 
So at 4 by 2, it's a peak. That is at 2, it's the peak. Amplitude 1. Positive slope, negative slope. So this is your y of t of the e. So this is all about the time shifting and scaling with a precedence rule. I hope there are no doubts. The next problem being the discrete time signal x of n shown below. Sketch and label each of the following signal that has been given here. So x of n minus 2, it's a it's it's a shifting problem. X of 2n, it's a scaling problem. This is a what is this? This is reflection. And what is this? You have to apply precedence. All things are there here. There is a, a scaling factor that is minus 1 or else you can call it as reflection. There is shifting. All these combinedly we have at C. First we will solve A, B, D and then come to C. So this is a given signal. There are Z at 0, my amplitude is 2. At 3, my amplitude is 2. At 1 and 2, amplitude is 4. This is a given signal. So the first one, first one that is x of n minus 2, x of n, n minus 2 means a delay by 2 or else right shift. Let me call it as right shift. Right shift by 2. This is being original signal. 0 comes to 2, 0 comes to 2, you have amplitude 2 here. 1 goes to 3, 1 goes to 3, you have amplitude 2, uh, sorry 4. 2, whatever I have uh, at 2 goes to 4, so amplitude is 4. Whatever I am having at 3 goes to 5, amplitude is 2. So this is being x of n minus 2, the problem number A. So the problem number B is scaling to 2n. It's 2n. Scaling means, this is the original signal, what do you have to do? Scaling factor, take it, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Ignore or discard the fractional uh, resulting value. This is 0. Retain it. This is 1 by 2. Ignore it or discard it. This is 1. Retain it. This you should discard. So at 0, I am having amplitude 2. So that has been written. At 1, I am having amplitude 4. That has been written. Rest everything is ignored. So this is a scaling version of the original signal that has been given. Okay, so now comes the D problem. So it is a reflection or folding, reflection or folding. So here what uh, we are doing is, we are just folding across the y-axis. This is a y-axis, you take this and you fold it in this way. You fold it in this way, 3 falls at minus 3, 2 falls at minus 2, 1 falls at minus 1, 0 at 0 itself. That same thing is happening. At 3, I am having amplitude 2. Here at minus 3, you are having amplitude 2. At 2, you are having amplitude 4. When you fold it, you have amplitude 4. So 1 comes to minus 1 and 0 remains there itself. This is the reflection or else one more way is, one more way is take this minus, write it down in this fashion. Minus 1 n. So minus 1 considered to be a scaling factor. If you consider it to be a scaling factor, what you are doing? You take it to the denominator. 0 by minus 1, 1 by minus 1, 2 by minus 1, 3 by minus 1. So, it will result in 0. This will result in minus 1. This will result in minus 2. This will result in minus 3. Write it in this way. At minus 3, what should be there? 2. 2 is there. At minus 2, what should be there? 4. 4 is there. At minus 1, what should be there? 4. 4 is there. At 0, as it is. Even this way is also okay. Okay, so these all are tricks. Okay, you can apply for solving in an efficient manner. Now, we have a combination of all these things. We need to apply a precedence rule. So, according to the precedence, I need to apply the shifting first. First, I need to apply shifting. So, let me shift it by how many times? Replace minus n with just n. Just n. So, that we call it as v of n, which is nothing but x of n plus 2, left shift by 2 times. So, what I do, this is n, so 0 goes to minus 2, one, my, uh, you have amplitude 2 here and 1 goes to minus 1, you have amplitude 4 here and 2 goes to 0 and you have amplitude 4 here and 3 goes to 1 and you have amplitude 2 here. 
So this is intermediate variable. Now what we are supposed to do? We have to scale it. Scaling means V of minus n. So divide by minus 1 everywhere. I change the ink. So divide by minus 1, divide by minus 1, divide by minus 1, divide by minus 1. You will get it as 2. This you will get it as 1, 0, minus 1. At minus 1, you have amplitude 2. Write it in this fashion. You have 2. At 0, you have amplitude. At 0, you have amplitude 4. Write it. At 1, you have amplitude 4. You have amplitude 4. At 1, you have amplitude 4. Okay. At 2, you have amplitude 2. At 2, you have amplitude 2. So, this is how you need to write, draw, uh, I mean, complete the problem. Very simple. Not at all a difficult one. Okay, so with this, we are completing the time scaling and time shifting and precedence rule and reflection topic. There is one class exercise I'm giving again for you. This is a given signal. So what you are supposed to do is you need to shift it, scale it, scale it, reflection. And one more problem I give. I'll give it x of minus 3t plus 2 so try this so with this we are com we are uh, just completed the topic of signal operations so we will begin with elementary signals so in elementary signal we are studying various kinds of different kinds of signals the first being the exponential signal second being sinusoidal signal third being exponentially damped sinusoidal signal step say function impulse function ramp function and some other functions are there here we'll be studying uh, three to four uh, different kinds of signals okay in short in brief so these all are our next particular topics so today in today's session i'll be explaining you these two things so we'll proceed with a exponential uh, signal first exponential signal first I have written pre-written some things just to uh, save some time of writing. So exponential signals general form is given in this way. X of t, b into e raised to a t. What is b and a? These are real parameters. b is the amplitude at t is equal to 0. Remember, b is the amplitude at t is equal to 0. Okay. And then... I am taking the variation considering A. I have two cases here. One is A less than 0 and A greater than 0. These two cases will be studying now here in the beneath. So here, if A is less than 0, if A is less than 0, means any negative value if you are having, let me consider e raised to minus t or minus 2t minus 3t. It's a decaying exponential. Please mark this terminology. Try to use these terminologies if you are writing exam or if you are doing something with signals and system. Decaying exponential. The exponential starts from the maximum value and it will decay and it will reach, tend to reach zero value. That's the meaning of decaying value. So, such a decaying exponential value will be resulted when your A is less than 0. For that, I have taken one example. Some random value, some random value. Let, let us consider A's value as minus 6. You can consider even minus 2 or minus 3 or whatever. Okay. So, let us consider B value as 5. Both these values are real values. Okay. So, if I use it in the standard equation, it looks like this. In B's place, I have put 5. In A's place, I am putting 6, minus 6. 5 into E raised to minus 60. How it varies? How it varies? So, when T's value is 0, if I substitute value equal to 0 here, so what do you get? X1 of 0 is equal to 5 into E raised to 0. E raised to 0 is what? Into 1, it is 5. So, at time x is 0, the value of the signal is phi. Value of signal is b itself. Like in general, I can write it as b. Okay. So, when I go on increasing, like if I give t is equal to 1, e raised to minus 6, t is equal to 2, e raised to minus 12, t 
p is equal to 3 e raised to minus 18 so the index value goes on increasing so you get you go on getting least and least and less value so that's why from here it will take a decaying exponential it's a decaying exponential and at some point it will reach zero and if you proceed in the this reverse direction for example if i give t is equal to minus 1 minus 6 into minus 1 will result in e raised to 6 e raised to 6 is a bigger value so you will result in bigger value so it will proceed in the exponential form this is how the curve looks like this is called we we talk only about the things that have happened this is the time axis where the things have already happened so if time is minus 1 minus 2 this is a future values about to happen these are past values already happened so we talk with respect to only the things what have already happened okay so that is from t0 to plus positive values of time so consider only this part from here to here it looks like decaying so that's why we call it as exponential decay or decaying exponential similarly if a is greater than 0 what happens let me consider a is equal to 5 now b is equal to 1 let me consider in this fashion so if i put it in the general form that has been mentioned 1 into e raised to 5t or else just it is e raised to 5t so here i substitute t is equal to 0 so x2 of 0 is equal to e raised to 0 which is 1 so i start from 1 and if you just t is equal to 1 means e raised to 5 t is equal to 2 e raised to 10 e raised to 15 e raised to 20 it goes on so it will rise in the exponential form as time proceeds and if you give t is equal to minus 1 what happens t is equal to minus 1 e raised to 5 minus 5 e raised to minus 10 it goes on decreasing exponentially and it will somewhere reach 0 10 to reach 0 in the time axis this is 1 so it goes on increasing so this if i consider from here to here it looks growing so this we call it as growing kind of exponential growing kind of exponential so remember this it's a very important one now i have a question for you what happens to x of t if a is equal to 0 i have already explained it just to uh, you know uh, mention it once again importantly i am i'm putting it so what happens here the x of t gets reduced to reduces to dc equal to or dc signal equal to equal to constant b so what happens if a is equal to 0 if i substitute a is equal to 0 what happens in this a is equal to 0 you will just get x of t is equal to b into e raised to a has become 0 0 into t this will result in b into e raised to 0 b e raised to 0 is 1 it is just b b is what it's a constant b is a constant so when b is constant your signal looks like this let me draw it shortly here b this is b this is time axis constant dc value constant dc value okay so uh, that's a right answer uh, uh, frame a constant straight line uh, that is parallel to x axis okay so this is about exponential signal and this is continuous time i have considered continuous time and there should be a discrete time right so we'll consider discrete time signal in the very next slide so this is discrete time signal so in discrete time signal the there is no exponential e raised to kind of thing because it is not continuous it's a discrete time so x of n is given by b into r is to n where r is what is r value here r is uh, uh, you take so r is okay r, r can be any value n is n is integer n is an integer it can have the value minus 1 minus 2 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 plus of minus plus or minus 3 like that it continues think that i have taken 2 okay 2 square 
if i ask you to write draw the uh, diagram of this uh, 2 raised to n 2 raised to n sorry 2 raised to n as n proceeds how it varies 2 raised to 0 0 0 uh, sorry 2 raised to 0 is 1 2 raised to 1 is 2 2 raised to 3 is 8 2 sorry 2 raised to 2 is 4 2 raised to 3 is 8 2 raised to 4 is 16 so it goes on incrementing in the exponential form am i right and on the negative side if you extend what happens just just for your idea minus one if i substitute minus one two raised to minus one means what it is one by two so you have one by two it goes on in this fashion okay so uh, for that and similarly if i consider one by two raised to n how it varies 1 by 2 raised to n so 1 by 2 raised to n if i plot the graph if i plot the graph across n 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 here i'll take one or two values so what happens half raised to 0 is half raised to uh, uh, half raised to 0 is 1 half raised to 1 is half half raised to 2 is 1 by 2 raised to 2 is 1 by 4 1 by 4 is 0 0.25 1 by 4 half raised to 3 is 1 by 8 1 by 8 is still more small quantity still more small quantity 1 by 1 by 16 it is still more small quantity so it goes on 0 so when your value is in the range 0 to 1 in this range when you square it or when you when you take its take its uh, you know index positive index it goes on decrementing okay it goes on decrementing fine so that you should remember so if i take give the negative value minus uh, 1 by 2 raised to minus 1 will give you 2 so this will give you 2 1 by 2 raised to minus 2 will give you 4 because 1 by 2 raised to minus 4 is minus 2 is like 2 square which is 4 so it will give you as 4 so this is how i need to concentrate only on this side this is exponentially decaying signal when the range of the signal of r is within the range 0 to 1 i hope it is clear okay so uh, uh, with this i i'm coming back here now come concentrate here i have four cases one when r is greater than zero when r is less than zero r is greater than zero again i am having two different cases that is r in the range zero to one like half like half r in the range greater than one that is like two square so now i have shown you when r value is one by two how it looked it is exponentially decaying that is what it looked half raised to 0 is half half raised to 2 is 1 by 4 1 by uh, 1 by 4 1 by 8 1 by 16 goes on decrementing this is how it looks decaying exponential when you are in the range 0 to 1 that explanation just now i provided using taking the value of r as 1 by 2 now similarly if i consider r value as 2 r value as 2 how it looks it looks only concentrate on positive side of the axis axis x axis it is exponentially increasing or else we call it as growing exponential when r is greater than 1 when r is greater than 1 very simple now we come to the case number 3 and 4 where r is less than 0 when r is less than 0 if r range is i'll take one more screen for this if r range is r ranges minus 1 by 2 let me consider i should have written in this manner okay this range so in this range i'll take the simplest one so this is in this range given range so now what i do is minus 1 to minus 1 by 2 raised to n for this i want to plot the curve so if i want to plot the curve how it looks so and at 0 anything raised to 0 is 1 so uh, let me write it as 1 
minus 1 by 2 raised to 1 is minus 1 by 2. How to write minus 1 by 2? At value of 1, your answer is minus 1 by 2. Minus 1 by 2 raised to 2 is some anything negative number square is positive. So minus 1 by 2 raised to 2 is 1 by 4. At 2, I am having 1 by 4. Now minus 1 by 2 raised to 3 is so it is cube. So uh, sign is retained minus 1 by 8. So at 3, I am having minus 1 by 8. At 4, square goes off 1 divided by 2 raised to 4 is 16. So at 4, 1 by 16. At 5, minus 1 by 32. At 6, 1 by 64. It goes on. So how, what do you call such signal? It is decaying, right? It is decaying and exponentially decaying. So I write it as decaying exponential. Something should be added to it. So what is that? Alternate signs decaying exponential. This is what I write. So uh, every time it is alternating between, it is altering between positive and negative, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So that's why alternate signs decaying exponential. That is what we call it as. Right? So this is case number three. So case number four. So if I consider minus two raised to n, how it looks? Okay, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Minus 2 raised to n. Minus 2 raised to 0 is 1. Minus 2 raised to 1 is minus 2. So it is minus 2. So I, I, I don't have space here. Please adjust with that. Minus 2 raised to 2 is 2 square. This is 4. Minus 2 raised to 3 is minus 8. It's still more big. Minus 2 raised to 4 is 16. So what is this? It is growing, growing exponential with alternate, alternate signs, alternate signs growing exponential. I hope it is clear. Now we'll quickly glance here. Minus 1 uh, to 0, the range, uh, I have considered the example of minus 1 by 2. So in that case, we could observe that it looks in this fashion. How to call it? We call it as alternate signs decaying exponential this is growing exponential with alternate signs alternate signs it is growing exponential this is decaying exponential so for this we considered example minus 2 raised to minus 2 r is equal to minus 2 raised to n we considered and that is what we got it so we are proceeding to the second kind of the signal Second kind of signal that is sinusoidal signals. Sinusoidal signal. The general form for the sinusoidal signal is A cos omega t plus theta. So don't confuse that why you are calling cos signal as sinusoidal signal. Because cos is also a sine signal. Sin and cos are the same signal, the same kind of looking signal. What is the difference between sine and cos? It is just the shift. Cos and sine varies by 90 degree shift. If you shift the cos signal by 90 degree, it will give you a sine signal. That you have learnt, right? Cos of theta plus 90 will give you sine. Right? Sine theta. That you know. So that's why, that's why what I am doing is I am calling cos as well as sine both as sinusoidal signal throughout the semester. Okay, sinusoidal signal means it might be cos or sine. It is something which is varying in this fashion. That signal we call it as sinusoidal signal. And normally, generally, we represent the sinusoidal signal with cos. A cos omega, omega naught t plus theta. Okay, so plus theta because plus 90 becomes the sine signal. That, that is what you have learnt in your trig trigonometry. Okay, so here A. A means amplitude. Omega naught means frequency in radians, 2 pi f t, 2 pi f t, f is a frequency in hertz. So 2 pi, uh, omega naught t is frequency in radians per second. If it is frequency in uh, frequency, then it is 
um, uh, cycles per second. Okay, theta is a phase angle in radians. Phase angle, I said. If it is 90 degree, it resembles Some the sine signal what you have learned. And to check its periodicity, you already are aware of periodicity. So, no need to tell it again. So, just to have a continuity, I have taken here x of t plus t applied to this a cos of omega t plus capital T plus pi. So, open the bracket omega t plus omega capital T plus pi. In place of omega capital T, I substitute 2 pi. Because we know that sinusoidal signals are periodic with period 2 pi. So, I 2 pi means it is as good as cos signal itself. Because after every 2 pi, your cos signal or your sinusoidal signal repeats. So, hence, it will give back to the uh, original signal x of t. Hence, it is periodic signal. And what is its period? I have equated omega capital T is equal to 2 pi. So, same thing I will be doing. T is equal to 2 pi by omega or omega naught. So, this is a period. Okay. So, similarly, if I uh, consider a dt signal to check its periodicity, wherever you have t, replace it with capital N, uh, replace it with N, wherever you have capital T, replace it with capital N, same thing in the same fashion, omega N should be equated with 2 pi. Here, while equating, you should be a bit careful because N can have only integers, hence you need to use extension M, small m, where m is, where m and n are both integers. Okay, so omega is equal to 2 pi by n into m. So m should be chosen such that uh, n should be an uh, integer, such that you need to choose. Here I have shown. n should be chosen such that n should be an uh, integer. So that is all. Omega is uh, a sine unit is radians per second, psi per cycle, and this is samples. This all things we have learned. So, in terms of uh, discrete time, the sinusoidal look, sinusoidal signal looks like in this fashion. This is a sinusoidal discrete time signal. This is how it looks. Okay. This is all about sinusoidal signals. I have two simple examples just to recap the things. So, I have given x1 of t. You, you have to check its periodicity and compute its period. How to do it? x1 of n plus n plus capital n so what you are supposed to do here so you are supposed to just take phi pi n plus phi pi capital n so phi pi capital n should be uh, equated with 2 pi m so you get n is equal to 2 pi by phi pi into m pi pi cancel choose m such that n is n is an integer so for m is equal to phi your n is equal to 2 samples that's it okay so and this results in uh, rational number hence it is a periodic signal so this is n is equal to 2 simple very simple things very simple this, these things we have already looked into so here capital n in order to have a continuity i'm taking this because you already know it so in place of n i place n plus capital n so what i get first time i write it as just n next i write it as 4 pi by 31 capital N plus pi by 3. So, I have to equate this 4 pi by 31 capital N with 2 pi M. So, pi and pi cancels 2 and this becomes 2. So, N is equal to 31 by 2 into M. Okay. So, M value chosen is 2. So, hence N will be 31 samples. That's it. The last part of today's lecture, relation between sinusoidal and complex exponential signal. So, what did Euler did is, he, did is, he related sinusoidal and complex exponential signal. He did that work. So, what Euler did? He connected or related sinusoidal and complex exponential signal in this fashion. So, e raised to j theta is given by cos theta plus j sin theta this is related by this is related by euler cos theta plus j sin theta this is what i wanted to discuss sinusoidal signal is ju just simple a cos omega t plus pi or a sin omega t plus pi in general we consider this exponential normal exponential signal is b into a raised to a t these two things we have studied this was the first exam first signal that we studied this is the second signal now we will relate it we, uh, we are not just relating sinusoidal and exponential, but we are relating complex exponential. What is the meaning of complex expo exponential? The meaning of complex ex exponential is both A and B should be a complex quantity. Like A should be J omega and B should be A into A is some amplitude E raised to J pi. 
j5 so these two are complex quantity so if i bring in in in, in complex exponential or exponential general formula b into e raised to uh, so and so we get it as in place of a i substitute omega j omega in place of b i substitute a into e raised to j5 this is how it looks this is how it looks if i if i write it a e exponentials e into it is so it's uh, index rule so j i'll take common omega t plus phi this is what we get and using euler's formula if i apply in place of theta i'm having omega t plus phi i would get it as cos a i'll write it a because it is there here a cos in place of theta omega t plus phi plus j a is there sin omega t plus phi so this is the exponential uh, complex exponential relation with sinusoidal signal so here the real time real part of the exponential signal that we discussed now is what is the real part here real part is a cos of omega t plus phi and imaginary part imaginary part is a sin of omega t plus phi that's why uh, students i said you like so we use cos in general for representing real part and sign in general we to represent imaginary part that's why we go with only cos whenever we are talking in general okay similarly in this is for ct signal in dt signal also it looks same real part of b into e raised to j omega n we don't write n we don't write we don't write t here we write n so whenever it is discrete time so you have to use small omega like this so real part is a cos of omega n plus pi so this is imaginary part b into e raised to j omega n is a sin of omega n plus phi so this is the relation between sinusoidal and the complex exponential signal so with this we are concluding the lecture number nine to summarize we studied about the, the the signal operations performed on independent time variable and we uh, studied about elementary signals basically the exponential signal and the sinusoidal signal and we also understood the relation between sinusoidal signal and complex exponential signal by using euler's identity thank you